every time I watch a highlight, he's doing something crazy. Bro. Like he just jumped from the free throw line the other night. I mean, he, he's he's a, he's he's a special talent in our league. His length is amazing. Now he can shoot three, so there's not much he can do. So he's he's the one and only. For years, basketball fans have been waiting to see who will snatch the crown as the best player on the planet. Well, I think we found him. What's up everybody, it's Jimmy, and for the past 20 years we have watched NBA superstars emerge, shine, and pass the torch to the next guy up. Some had fires that shine bright but lit a brief flame. Others shine brighter and longer than just about anyone else. Every generation has that guy. The 70s had Kareem, the 80s had Magic or Bird depending on how you look at it, the 90s had Jordan, the 2000s had Kobe, and the 2010s had LeBron. And with the 20s right around the corner, we are due for another generational player. A player that stands above all of his peers. A superstar that not only dominates his generation, but defines it. I'm talking about that man, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, throughout this entire season, we have seen Giannis grow into a player that is doing things that don't even make sense. Two seasons ago, Giannis won the NBA's most improved player, and yet somehow he has improved his game this season by just as much as he did in 2017. In fact, every single season he's been in the NBA, his game has progressed so much that you could legitimately make an argument that he was the most improved player in the league for the last four seasons. But how does a guy go from averaging 16 and 7 with no all-star mention, to starting in the all-star game, to averaging 27, 10, and 5 while being the best defensive player on the court, and still get remarkably better the next season? You see, Giannis doesn't just have the potential to be the best player of his era, he has the potential to be the best player of all time. Prior to the season, when watching Giannis play, I thought he was exceptionally good. All NBA material. But as I'm sure a lot of other fans thought, I believe that he was just bigger, stronger, and faster than anyone else. I mean, seriously. Who else is doing this? And if you take a look at a brief history of big, fast, and strong players who relied specifically on these aspects of their game, the NBA has seen a bunch of guys that meet those requirements. Back in 2013, Blake Griffin was pretty special. Anthony Davis has proven himself to be Hall of Fame caliber. Go back a little further and you have Amari Stoudemire, a player that, if injury never plagued his career, was projected to be the next guy up. Go back even further and you have Kevin Garnett and looking into the future you got Zion Williamson. Prior to this season I was under the impression that Giannis fell somewhere within this realm. Big, strong, and freakishly athletic, but lacked the skill set, the right pieces around him, and the it factor to take him into the nearly untouchable upper echelon of players. But, brothers, I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. You know, one of my friends has been rocking this Greek Freak jersey for the past couple years. He's been on the Giannis hype train for quite some time now, and every time he got to talking about him, I would always give my friend a tough time because he would make these outlandish statements about Giannis being the best player in the league and how he's unstoppable and all this great stuff. But now I realize that all along it was me that was just in denial about his dominance and potential. Because here's the thing, Giannis is not only the best player in the league, he is the best player we have seen in the last 20 years. And I know, that is a bold statement. Trust me, I'm right there with you. But as a die-hard LeBron fanboy, as a kid that watched Kobe dust cats on a nightly basis, and as a fan who watched Shaq bully seven-foot men around, I have never seen anything like Giannis Antetokounmpo. If I were to describe Giannis to someone who has never seen him play, 
I would say, have you ever seen a grown man play crunch against a bunch of little kids, but he's actually trying and it's kind of f***ed up how unfair it is? Yeah, that's Giannis, but against NBA players. Now, as a LeBron fan and as a fan of 2000s basketball, this kills me to say. Braun is the reason why I fell in love with the game. I wanted to dunk like him, dominate like him, I wanted to walk like him. But I'll be damned if this man Giannis ain't the best basketball player I've seen since Michael Jordan. According to basketballreference.com, Giannis is most similar to these five players. Now, of course, these similarities aren't based on play style, but more how similar are their numbers, how similar are their careers, the highs and the lows, and the shape of their careers. How good were they at their best? How bad were they at their worst? Now, we can take a few things away from these comparisons. First, these comps are based solely off of stats and because of this, don't take into consideration aspects of a player's game that don't show up on a stat sheet, like leadership, energy, potential, and in most cases, basketball IQ. And this is just to name a few. For example, there is a lot more to defense than just steals and blocks. Giannis's presence on defense alone is one of his strong suits. His defensive IQ is also through the roof, but of course, there's no statistic for this specific skill set. And the second and most eye-opening realization we can take from these comparisons is that if we expand the comparable players to the top 10 most similar, only four of the 10 players on this list played in the modern NBA. The other six played a long time ago, in the 50s and 60s. Giannis is so different, so revolutionary in his play style and skill set that there is hardly any comparison to him in the modern NBA. It's actually unbelievable how much this guy at 24 years old isn't just taking steps ahead of the rest of the league, but taking giant leaps above everyone else. Literally. Ask yourself. When was the last time the best player in the NBA was also the best defensive player in the NBA? You have Kawhi Leonard who, by the way, I think is a player that doesn't get nearly the recognition he deserves, but Kawhi has never really been the best player in the league. In 2009, LeBron won MVP and came second in voting for Defensive Player of the Year. Back in 1994, Hakeem won Defensive Player of the Year, MVP, and won an NBA championship all in the same season. Something that has never been done before and something that hasn't been done since. And prior to the dream, you have to go way back over 30 years ago when Michael Jordan won Defensive Player of the Year and MVP in the same season. Basically, it is an extremely difficult feat to accomplish and it takes an all-time great to do it. Now, of course, Giannis doesn't score the most points, he doesn't have the best shot, and he doesn't have the most versatile skill set on the offensive end. But all of that goes out the window when you watch him play. Because in reality, Giannis can put the ball in the hoop whenever the hell he wants to. And still, he is far more dominant on the defensive end. This season, Giannis was second in defensive rebounds, third in points per game, first in efficiency, second in defensive rating, second in box plus minus, third in offensive win shares, and third in defensive win shares. All of this while only playing 32 minutes per game. And what has taken him over the top this season is a combination of a few things. First, his actual skill. The tangible stuff like his passing, his athleticism, and especially his shot have gotten considerably better. But that's obvious. The two things that I've seen develop in his game over the past year that you can't put a number on is his leadership and his basketball IQ. Let me ask you this. How much of a leader was Blake Griffin at 24 years old? How much of a leader is Anthony Davis? Amari Stoudemire. Now watch how Giannis carries himself and how he addresses his team, and tell me this isn't a guy you can get behind. When your best player is also the player with the most desire and fire on the court, that is a recipe for greatness. You see the same formula in guys like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Larry Bird. Combine that with his ever-expanding basketball IQ, his defensive timing, knowing when to shoot and when not to, being able to read offensive and defensive schemes makes Giannis more lethal than any player in recent NBA history. 
It's awesome to watch this huge 7 foot demigod take one dribble and dunk from the free throw line, but it is infectious to watch a 7 foot demigod get fired up when his teammates get an and one and when he gets consecutive stops on the defensive end. But the most eye opening realization that I've made about Giannis is that for the first time in about a decade, we are watching a player that we can legitimately say has the very attainable potential to be a LeBron or Kobe or Magic level player. In fact, I don't even feel like I'm going out on a limb when I say that I think we're watching a player that we can legitimately say might end up being the GOAT when it's all said and done. Over the past 5 or 6 years, I've been waiting for the next transcendent player to emerge. Not that I've been wanting it to happen, but rather I was interested to see who it would be. And a few players have presented themselves to have the tools and potential to be that guy. Kevin Durant has everything it takes to reach GOAT levels. There isn't a single weak spot in his game. Except he lacks the mental toughness that some other greats have displayed and he made arguably the weakest move of any NBA superstar in history. For some time, I thought that Kawhi may be the next guy up. His game is actually strikingly similar to Jordan's. But again, I think that Kawhi lacks the leadership and alpha mindset to rise to that very top tier. Another player that had me in awe and still wows me every single time I watch him play is Stephen Curry. And although Curry is definitely among the most elite group of hoopers to ever lace up, I think that he has paved such a unique path for himself that he is more of a modern day basketball pioneer than he is the GOAT. These are all players that I thought might be the guy to not just take the throne as the best player on the planet, but the best player of all time. And although their stories aren't quite finished yet, I think we've seen enough to know what to expect in years to come. But with Giannis, at the rate that he's going, I'm genuinely excited to see where his ceiling is. Think about it like this. These are the top 10 NBA players under the age of 25. Impressive list. But when you exclude Giannis, all 9 of these players have 5 all-star appearances combined. Giannis has 3 by himself. All 9 of these players have a combined 1 All-NBA award. Giannis has 3. In fact, according to basketballreference.com, the Greek freak already has a probability of 8.2% of making it into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Now that may not sound like much, but that is a higher probability than every other player under the age of 25 in NBA history combined. A few weeks ago, Shaq, another player that dominated the NBA, gave props to Giannis. But he didn't just give any props. Shaq said something that I thought I would never hear come out of his mouth. Take a look, Shaq, at the freak. Look at this, man. Oh. He's you, man. Shaq, he's you in there. No, he's better. When he gets there, he's, he's you. Better. He's better. Uh, no, he's not better. That, he's oh. you in here, man. He's better. Shaq, a man that would rather lie and sit in his misery than compliment another player, not only said that Giannis was good, he said that Giannis was better than he was at the same age. Some people say that Shaq was just trying to be nice, but to those folks, y'all must not know Shaq very well. And when you look at the numbers, it is pretty damn close. But again, it's that stuff that doesn't show up in a stat sheet that really does make a 24 year old Giannis better than a 24 year old Shaq. The leadership, the energy, the versatility on both ends of the floor, and again, the fact that he is still getting better every single season. The league has become a full-blown shooters league over the past 5 years with no slowing down in sight. That is until Giannis exploded and said, fuck all that, I can be the best thing you've seen since MJ without even taking a jump shot. But even the best player in the world has his weaknesses. Giannis, although taking steps towards getting a consistent jumper, still isn't a solid threat from outside. And when I say outside, I mean anything outside of 15 feet. Of course, in this space, he's just one step away from an inside bucket. But in order to continue his growth as a player, he will have to learn how to rely less on his freakish athleticism and length and rely more on his expanding skill set. He has a couple moves he can go to off the dribble, like his hesitation, his spin move inside the paint, and a deadly Euro step he has really gotten down to a science. But more often than not, you'll see him just dive at the basket and simply go faster and higher than everyone else. See, he's able to do this because, well, who's gonna stop him? 
But again, if he wants to continue to take his game to another level, he will have to clean up these moves, develop a more diverse arsenal, and learn how to go to these moves more often. And lastly, many claims regarding Giannis' outright dominance may simply be shrugged off because he hasn't really accomplished anything yet. Well, he has, but not anything that screams best player in the world. No MVPs, no scoring titles, no conference championships, no finals MVPs, and no NBA championships. Of course, he is still young and some of these may change very soon, but nonetheless, how dominant can a player be if he has no hardware? Back when a young LeBron was just starting to prove his greatness, people were skeptical of how much success he would really find in the NBA. Remember, it took him five seasons to win a scoring title, six seasons to win his first MVP, and nine seasons to win his first ring. And this same criticism has been made towards just about every superstar in NBA history. For the first stretch of Michael Jordan's career, people often said that he was just a glorified scorer who couldn't lead his team to a championship. Go way back to the 60s and people used to criticize Wilt for being a ball hog who was only concerned with personal accomplishments. But this is all part of the growing pains every great player must go through, Giannis included. So let this be a public notice that I am now 100% on the Giannis bandwagon. I know, I know, it's a little late so excuse my ignorance. I now see the error of my ways. This dude is the real deal, he's everything we thought he would be and more, and he may one day be the best player to ever play the game. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time. Uh, where will you, what kind of player will you be in five years from now? Hey, yo. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be much stronger. I'll be, I'll be much better in everything that I do in the court.